Plenty of people are scared of flying. Usually, fears about the plane suddenly going down are totally irrational, considering how rare it is for something to go wrong on a commercial flight. But can you imagine looking out of your window and seeing this? Jeez, let's hope this is the first and only time you'll lay your eyes on this terrifying sight. And speaking of firsts, I've got a buttload of more amazing internet tidbits coming right up in this episode of Things You Will See for the First Time in Your Life. If someone asked you to make a lettuce from scratch, you'd probably go about cultivating and farming it, right? But what if I told you there's a shocking shortcut for making the perfect lettuce? Wait, what? This weird rippling sheet certainly has the look and feel of lettuce, but if you're not quite seeing it yet, just watch as this vegetable sorceress tears it into strips and meticulously rolls and scrunches them into balls like she's tearing pages from a notebook. Each ball is then coated in another scrunched layer, which gradually builds up to form a perfect-looking head of lettuce. It even looks like a fresh iceberg when it's cut in half. But what exactly is going on here? Well, it all begins with a selection of hot colored wax and a vat of water. A careful combination of white and green is poured into the vat, and when the wax touches the water, it begins to solidify, melting into each other to create a realistic looking color pattern. But there's one big question left to ask. Why make fake lettuce out of wax in the first place? When these videos, which were filmed in Japan, first started to go viral, conspiracy theories abounded that some Japanese restaurants were using synthetic lettuce in their food or even exporting it elsewhere. Of course, that's a load of rubbish. The truth is that it's traditional for restaurants in Japan to display faux food in their window to help diners choose their order. After all, it would be a waste of time and resources to display real food in the window when you can make a perfect-looking dish that will last forever. Eh, pretty smart, right? This waxwork lettuce might be a convincing sham, but there's certainly nothing fake about the top-notch content you'll find right here at Be Amazed. All you need to do to make sure you stay in the loop is hit those like and subscribe buttons, and of course tickle that little bell icon too. All done? Onwards and upwards, friends. Picture this. After hearing the first rumblings of a storm rolling in, you step outside on your front porch to smell the fresh rain hitting the pavement. When this happens... Morgan City resident Sarah Ribardi had stepped outside of her Cypress Garden subdivision home one morning in August 2020 when a giant bolt of lightning appeared out of nowhere and totally obliterated her neighbor's tree. As you can see, Ribardi was caught totally off guard and had to literally duck as wood and debris flew through the air. Anyone else obsessed with the way the cat instantly runs straight toward the lightning bolt? Maybe he's an undercover first responder on the scene. Although the tree was completely destroyed and there was some minor damage to Ribardi's neighbor's house, no injuries were reported after the incident. Talk about striking it lucky. There's something calming about a walk through a forest or woodland, but have you ever stopped to look up at the canopy above you and notice that the treetops are refusing to touch? If you've ever clocked this before, you should know that it's no coincidence. This bizarre phenomenon is actually known as crown shyness, and it's been observed all over the world. From the mangroves of Costa Rica, to the towering camphor trees of Malaysia. The name refers to the way the crowns of fully stocked trees refuse to touch each other, forming a canopy of channel-like gaps. When viewed from above, crown shyness almost looks like a giant broccoli. Although it's most common among trees of the same species, it also occurs between those that aren't related in any way. 
There are several theories that attempt to explain why this natural phenomenon occurs, although the exact reason is not known. These deliberate boundaries might improve the plant's access to resources, such as light, while other theories suggest the gaps may even stop the spread of leaf-munching insects, parasitic vines, or infectious diseases. In other words, the plants refuse to touch because they're worried they might catch something. It seems like trees were social distancing before it was cool. These days, a simple sneeze can raise a few eyebrows, but in days past, it was just a part of life. You might have even heard your dog or cat sneeze before, but have you ever heard a turtle do it? Is it possible to die from acuteness overload? Because this video should come with a health warning. You probably hadn't even considered whether turtles or tortoises sneeze, but as you just saw, they do indeed make a tiny, high-pitched sound almost like a squeak. Although constant sneezing could be a sign of something more serious like a respiratory infection, it's usually nothing to worry about. This little guy looks like he scared himself there. It's pretty hard to imagine what the life of an astronaut is like. Once all the excitement of life among the stars has settled down, you have to get used to the fact that even the most mundane tasks on Earth might be a little trickier up there. For example, how do you wring out a towel in space? The simple answer is, you can't. Let's start wringing it out. It's really wet. Whoa, what kind of black magic is this? As demonstrated here by astronaut Chris Hadfield from the Canada Space Agency, the water clings to the washcloth, forming an almost protective shield around it, rather than dripping straight off it like it would on Earth. What's even crazier is the way the water rings out of the cloth and coats Hadfield's hands like he has some kind of X-Men-worthy superpower. The reason why the liquid clings to the wash towel and to Hadfield's hands like shimmering jello is all down to its surface tension. You see, gravity pulls liquid down into the shape of the container it's in on Earth. But in space, as we all know, gravity's effects are different. Up there, surface tension shapes the water into spheres. Magnetic-like molecules on the water's surface then cause the liquid to behave like an elastic skin as each molecule is pulled with equal tension by its neighbors, adhering to the washcloth and Hadfield's hands. Pretty neat, huh? Hey you! Yes, you laying in bed watching this video on your phone. Have you seen anything brilliantly bonkers on the World Wide Web which you think is worth sharing with your fellow netizens? Well, if so, get in touch at clips at beamaze.com. You might even earn yourself a shout-out if it gets featured in a future episode. Plus, if we like your clip enough, we might even buy it. So what are you waiting for? Penguins have to be some of the most lovable creatures on Earth. But how do you take a penguin and make it even more adorable? You shrink it, that's how. <laughs> These precious, flightless birds are known as fairy penguins. I'll give you a second to recover from that name. Named for their small size, full-grown adults of this species are only about 13 inches tall and weigh 2 to 3 pounds, making them the smallest of the 18 penguin species native to coastal southern Australia and New Zealand. The fairy penguins you see here are the first to be exhibited at the Bronx Zoo, which is currently only one of three facilities in the U.S. to have these little birds. The colony was originally hatched at the Taronga Zoo in Sydney, Australia, and were brought to the Bronx Zoo as part of a breeding program. Approximately 15 penguins a year hatch at Taronga, making it the most successful little penguin breeding program in the world. The fairy penguin colony at the Bronx Zoo will help to ensure continued genetic diversity in the little penguin population across the U.S. That's some big responsibility to carry on those tiny little shoulders. Clouds may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but they're super calming to look at most of the time. All except this terrifying cloud, that is.
It might look like a swirling vortex from a sci-fi movie, but this jaw-dropping video was actually filmed in the town of Pico Truncado in the Santa Cruz province of Argentina. The man behind the camera said he was visiting a friend when this huge cylindrical cloud appeared, seemingly out of nowhere, moments before a storm rolled in. This mesmerizing cloud formation is actually a rare meteorological phenomenon known as a roll cloud. A roll cloud is a low, horizontal, tube-shaped cloud formation, which can sometimes form when a horizontal vortex forms in the atmosphere. They usually appear in anticipation of a thunderstorm and can become detached from the main structure, as the storm decays and the cloud continues moving along, appearing to be rolling horizontally across the sky. Roll clouds appear most commonly in northern Australia, where they're known as morning glory clouds. When these clouds appear, power gliders will sometimes fly into the clouds, turn off their engines, and ride along with them for miles at a time. Who knew cloud surfing could be a sport? In nature, the food chain governs who eats who. Most of the time, bigger animals eat smaller animals, and those smaller animals eat even tinier ones. But sometimes, animals get a little too greedy for their own good and end up biting off more than they can chew. I'm so putting this on YouTube. <laughs> Are you recording this? Yes. Can you take a guess what this greedy pelican at the New Orleans Zoo has trapped in his gullet? Here's a clue. It was probably swimming alongside him moments earlier, and it might have a tummy full of bread. That's right, Mr. Pelican here is trying to swallow a duck. But judging by the way his bill pouch is bulging and snapping open and shut, he's regretting it very, very much. As water birds, pelicans use fish as their main food source. But if a small reptile or amphibian comes their way, they'll usually eat that too. But pelicans are nothing if not opportunistic. They have been observed eating smaller birds like pigeons, sometimes scooping up water to drown them before swallowing. But while a pigeon is one thing, a duck is, well, a whole other kettle of fish. This greedy bird is probably seconds away from spewing the duck back up. Just because Pella can, doesn't mean Pella should. If you suffer from arachnophobia, now is the perfect time to go fix yourself a quick snack. Okay, now that the most fearless among us remain, allow me to introduce you to what is possibly the biggest jumping spider you will ever see. Geez, the guy behind the camera must have kahoolies made of pure steel. This eight-legged fiend may look intimidating, but jumping spiders of all kinds are completely harmless to humans, because their bite is non-toxic. What's more, these generally small arachnids are sometimes referred to as feline spiders because they're curious rather than aggressive, almost like a cat, but with four more legs and six more eyes. In fact, their curious nature means jumping spiders can actually be very enjoyable pets, while their keen hunting abilities also make them great natural pest control. But it's important to remember one thing. Jumping spiders get their name because of their incredible jumping abilities, and they're not afraid to remind you of them. Man, this video should come with a jump scare warning. There's no denying that cats are some of the chillest pets around. But there are a few drawbacks to being a cat owner, like all that pesky stray fur. And when it all gets too much, it's time to bring out the brush. It may look like this poor cat is being sheared like a sheep, but all that fur is coming off naturally. Cats shed every day and normally lose and regrow their millions of hairs on a routine basis, but we can give them a little helping hand with the help of a friendly brush every now and then. In this mesmerizing clip, Japanese YouTuber Pastel Cat World is using a tool called the Furminator, which is specially designed to help with de-shedding. As they run the tool from the cat's head towards its tail, a hefty pile of hair begins to pile up and can be put aside. And you can't forget the tummy, too. Hmm. 
Man, this has got to be one of the chillest felines I've ever seen. As the stray hair piles up more and more, the real cat gets smaller and smaller. The result? A whole new cat! Well, kinda. They even gave this life-size hairball the same markings and two eyes. Uh, no wonder I'm allergic. Let's take a moment to circle back to the terrifying clip I showed you at the very start of this video, shall we? Here's a quick reminder. Ah yes, a flaming plane engine. It's all coming back to me now. On the afternoon of February the 20th, 2021, United Airlines Flight 328 suffered an engine loss shortly after takeoff from Denver International Airport while en route to Honolulu. One passenger, Chad Schnell, was sitting right by the faulty engine and managed to capture this footage showing severe damage and an active fire. Although it looks scary, commercial aircraft such as this Boeing 777-200 are designed to be able to fly with just one engine in case of events like this one. Engine explosions, on the other hand, can be fatal, as they can damage the fuselage or wings of an aircraft. Thankfully, Flight 328 safely returned to the airport with no injuries to the 231 passengers and 10 crew on board. But boy, is this video goosebump inducing. If I were aboard this flight, I'd feel like I had stepped into one of the Final Destination movies. And time for something a little more lighthearted now. Garden wildlife is pretty limited for most of us. You might expect to see a squirrel, a magpie, or a fox enjoying your backyard. But if you happen to live in the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, local wildlife tends to be slightly on the larger side. In March 2021, Mason Trebani was sipping his morning coffee on the porch of his rental cabin in Gatlinburg, Texas, when he was surprised to see a young black bear wandering around in the backyard. But just when things couldn't get any wilder, this happened. It is in the jacuzzi. Okay, uh, I'm, glad I wasn't, I'm glad I wasn't in the jacuzzi. It's in the jacuzzi. The cub decided the best way to get warm would be to clamber into the hot tub. After plucking up enough courage, Trebony tentatively pushed open the porch door to take a closer look, but the bear seemed totally unfazed by his presence and continued to enjoy his soak. Warm water. Some steam's coming up. It's just having a blast. Now it's trying to eat the filter. All Trebony needs to do now is to become a certified Disney princess and fling open his window and whistle a tune as the birds gather on his deck. Seriously though, I would not be getting into that hot tub anytime soon. He knows where it is now. How many of you have played Among Us before? And there's no denying just how addictive this online multiplayer social deduction game can be. In fact, I hear the sound effects in my sleep these days. They say too much screen time can be bad for your brain, but if you can't live without your fix, just take a look at this incredible interpretation of Among Us using a more traditional medium. The true Among Us fans will recognize this nifty little creation as the emergency button which is pressed in the game to call a meeting between players. True to the game, when the button is pressed, all the players immediately pop up as if they're ready to discuss who the imposter is. This crazy craft was created by YouTuber Baijin, using nothing but cardboard boxes, tape, a pen, glue gun, toothpicks, and ice pop sticks. He uses pre-made templates for all of the various components as well as the lovable little characters, which he glues to the card and carefully cuts around to create each piece. The ice pop sticks and toothpicks are then used to create a hinge-like mechanism that will allow each colorful astronaut to pop up when the button is pressed. In case you're wondering how it all works, the mechanism is spring-loaded with the help of a single elastic band stretched over part of a ballpoint pen. When mom says, no more games on your phone, Baijun is the guy to call. There are some things in life that only the most fearless, or stupid, among us would try. One of those things is swimming with sharks. 
And I'm not talking about cage diving, I'm talking about actually entering the water with a shark in nothing but your bathing shorts. All right, we're in neutral. We're in reverse. In May 2020, California resident Maxwell Fleming and his friend Ryder were spearfishing near the Channel Islands when they noticed an ominous fin lurking in the water like something out of Jaws. As the fin approached slowly, the men decided it was just a harmless basking shark. But after Ryder dived in to swim with the magnificent creature, he started to panic that it might actually be a great white instead. Dude, that's a... That's not a basking shark, dude. Thankfully, Ryder managed to scramble back to the safety of the boat, but after all the blind panic, the pair were able to take a closer look at the fish and determined that it really was a basking shark after all. They may have gotten away with it this time, but I bet they won't be taking any chances in the future. You probably associate bridges with strength and stability, but I wouldn't want to walk across this one, let alone drive on it. The bouncing structure in this video is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which connects Staten Island and Brooklyn, New York. Although the bridge has been in operation since 1964 and holds firm and steady as busy traffic passes over it day in and day out, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority was forced to temporarily close it for a total of 45 minutes in November 2020 due to severe high winds. As the wind reached extremes of 96.5 kilometers per hour, the bridge heaved and groaned like some sleeping giant. And while it may have been daunting to watch such a huge structure bend and move, that's precisely what suspension bridges like this one were built to do. Thankfully, no one was hurt during the incident and no structural damages were reported, so this is actually a pretty great display of engineering. All that's missing from this apocalypse-esque video is a horde of angry zombies running towards the camera. If I were to compile a list of the least interesting creatures on Earth, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised to see clams up there. Usually, these nondescript shells are found washed up on the beach or served up in fancy restaurants. But have you ever seen what lives inside one before? I think I just threw up in my mouth a little. That huge, bright orange tongue you see is actually known as the clam's foot, which they use to get around. This muscular organ allows the clam to propel itself along with lateral side-to-side -side movements, while it's also pretty helpful for digging into the sand to keep the creature out of harm's way. Some species of clam can even extend this foot several inches, but that's not the only bizarre feature you'll find inside a clam. They also contain something called siphons, which are essentially two connected straws which clams stick out of their shells. One pulls in water containing food particles and oxygen, and the other expels waste. And don't you think life would be easier if humans had built-in straws too? If you show animals the compassion they deserve, the chances are they will repay the favor. Just ask this little girl, who fell forwards off the saddle while riding her horse in 2016. Elena and her horse Freeman regularly trained together at the Konglugen Ride Club in Vetra, Norway. But since Freeman is so small, it's easy for the rider to sometimes fall off the saddle. Just after clearing a fence jump in this clip, Elena starts to topple forward and eventually falls over Freeman's head. But the horse is so well trained that he stops immediately and even gives her a few supportive nudges with his muzzle to try and get her back upright again. Freeman was all like, uh, hello, I think you're facing the wrong way, miss. Have you ever thought about how you might go about your daily activities without something as fundamental as your sense of sight? Well, plenty of people in the world do this. In fact, 
there are plenty of incredibly creative solutions to help blind people complete the most basic tasks in life. Allow me to introduce you to blind YouTuber Corey Jackson, who's going to show you how texting is done. Dot six, cap H E L L O, space dot six, cap E N N I F E R. And now I'm going to flip Four, it back over Jennifer. so you can see what I wrote. I typed, hello, Jennifer. That's pretty incredible, right? Jackson is able to type his messages all thanks to something called Braille Screen Input, which can be installed on your smartphone. There's not physical dots on the screen, but as you can see, you can see down the uh, one side you'll see one, two, three, down the other side you'll see four, five, six, and that's what makes up a standard Braille cell, and different combinations of those dots or numbers make up various letters. The Braille system was devised by Lewis Braille in 1821 and consists of raised dots arranged in cells. A single cell is made up of six dots that fit under the fingertips, arranged into two columns of three dots each. As Jackson explains, this clever smartphone input will create a six-dot Braille cell on the screen, with numbers 1, 2, and 3 on one side of the screen and 4, 5, and 6 on the other. The first 10 letters of the alphabet are formed using the top four dots, that's 1, 2, 4, and 5, while adding dot 3 makes the next 10 letters, and adding a dot 6 on top of that makes the final 6 letters. Someone who is well versed in the 6 dot braille cell will know exactly where to locate each dot and how to create each letter of the alphabet using various different combinations. Well, that's my mind blown. Now, which of these things made your eyes widen the most? And if you can't get enough of all things weird, wonderful, and downright amazing, why not go ahead and watch the rest of the videos in this series next? And as always, thanks for watching, guys.